Go back to a story we covered last time. Yes. Of a story of a 73-year-old uh, 73-year-old woman who stole from a Walmart? Walmart of $13.88 right. worth of stuff. Okay. Now, the woman has dementia, so it's very likely yeah. she walked out without remembering to pay, right? Yeah. Okay. So the She did have a credit card with her, and mm-hmm. she tried to pay for it. And the, what, the employee refused to take the money? They refused. They took the mar- merchandise back. And called the police? Called the police. Okay. Then what happened? And then, you know, the police showed up, and they tried to arrest well, they did arrest her and uh, broke her in that. They broke her arm and her shoulder. Or dislocated her dislocated shoulder. Dislocated her right. shoulder. So. Okay. And left her in, um, in the cell for six hours without any medical uh, treatment or anything. Pretty so. standard procedure, right? <laughs> well, that's what you're supposed to do with the hardened criminals like 73-year-old like dementia. Yeah. Yeah, ridden people. So um, afterwards, they come back to the station, right? They she's in put in a cell. Yeah. They review the body cam footage. After have they have taken this menace off the uh, yes, street. Yes, yes, great, yeah. great, great service to the community. Yeah. Um, and they begin to laugh. They uh, came back and they started watching their show. What they call it a cop show, cop the body uh, cam show, body cam the, show. Yeah. They yeah. can watch it all day, right? They can watch it all day right. and. Uh, as they're watching it, they're laughing and giggling. Talking about, did you hear the pop? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's a big joke, right? Yeah, I mean, this guy, Hobbs, is actually talking about popping an 80-year-old, well, not a 73-year-old woman yeah. shoulder like he has done something really good for the community. Right. Like he's a hero. Like he's a hero. The big man on campus, yeah. yeah. While um, he was doing that, he was out of breath. I he think was. He, I think it was for a show, for <laughs> just for the camera. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think so because he wanted to show that there was a struggle. There was the real. This woman was really fighting, and he was fighting back. And right, because we don't have eyes, right? Yeah. Yeah, we don't know that yeah. she only weighs a hundred pounds, and yeah, she's seventy three. Okay. Yeah. And so they show some other another police officer. Um, yeah, another one of their fine, upstanding, upstanding fa- community member <laughs> walked in. Sure, and uh, he also started talking about it. You know, yeah, like it was uh, a normal you, thing. You guys did a great job. Yeah, and by the book, by the book, and he also failed to check on this lady, provide yeah. her med- medical help. But it was only for six hours. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> They yeah. didn't realize it until they transported her to the jail, and then the jail people are the one that called the medical help for her. Imagine that. Um, yeah, I don't know. There seemed to be some, maybe a bit of remorse on the side of the, uh, on the part of the one. Jalali. The lady, yeah, the lady cop. She was um, covering her eyes while watching it, and also at the same time trying to get approval from her Superiors. colleagues. Yeah. Or, you know, so it seemed I, I could really couldn't tell if she was she was having trouble watching it because she was having trouble seeing herself on camera or because she felt bad about what happened. I couldn't tell which was the case. I think uh, she was. Um, I think she had doubts about how it went and uh, she felt bad about it. I. I think that's why she was doing that. OK, because but, at the, but at the same time, she wanted approval from her partner. Of course. Yeah. And she's a rookie, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, my only point was that not everyone's as comfortable on camera as we are. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> this is only the first time seeing herself on camera and not, um, not being pleased with the results. And so anyways, but um, yeah, and then they talked about it later on. They talked about, or she talked about how there may be some um, price to pay for what happened, maybe some reprisal or, I don't know, some corrective action. Maybe she was concerned about that. Well, she was. Uh, she was worried uh, that uh, her boss was going to... Um, he did show up at the scene, supervisor. He did say that he doesn't care if the DA drops the charges or not. But mm-hmm. beyond that, we don't know what he said. Uh, he may have 
concerns about uh, their tactics or what went wrong there. Or just, but you know, apparently he didn't do anything about it though. Probably concerned about the tactics, maybe. Yeah. Now, especially now that there's a lawsuit, you know, now it's very much a concern. Well, that's why we know the about this video is exactly. because of the lawsuit. That's when it came out, and um, you can, um, and after it came out, that's when they were put on administrative leave. Until then, they were still on duty. Who knows how many more people got uh, roughed up the same way? Yeah, it's hard to say, but yeah, this goes to the um, the overarching theme of the the culture. In these departments, and how they're trained, and the expectations, how you treat people, you're, you know, you're arresting or whatever the case is, it's just, it's it's disproportional, you know, the way they treat people. I mean, she, they, they feel, you know, they were very comfortable watching this video. First of all, they were having a good time. Yeah. So obviously, they like this stuff. Clearly. The second part is uh, they. They were not worried about it because he says the blue team got it. Meaning the that they, it. They're, the blue team is going to protect their own. The blue wall? Yeah. Yeah. They tend to. Yeah. They tend to. And that we've seen that historically that they're rarely ever prosecuted for um, behavior like this. And it's a shame. But something has to be done to, I don't know, mitigate that kind of behavior. So do you think... Um, the prosecutors are going to get involved in that? Are it, they going to file charges against these officers? Uh, it's hard to say. They work they work so closely together, it's hard to... Uh, so far, they haven't. I mean, this is a lawsuit Yeah. for monetary damages. It's not a criminal or anything. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean... The family, I don't know if they can file charges against the I mean, police. you would think they so. They probably can't. Why not? Uh, I mean, there I mean, should be charges. I mean, there should be charges for assault because if you break somebody's sh- uh, shoulder or Excessive dislocate, force, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, I would sue for that. For I sure. mean, so you would be in trouble. I mean, the city should be doing it. But, yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like it's been said before, but you know, when prosecutors they work so closely with the police officers. They're actually very hesitant to prosecute them because yeah. they need them, right? To collect yeah. evidence and things like that. So this is why you should have independent prosecutors who are not at all tied to the police departments. It shouldn't. Uh, it's almost like an incestuous relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this video reminded me of a video back, uh, I think it was a couple of years ago, where this uh, uh, guy had a a gun that he used for his job. Mm-hmm. It was not a gun. It was a pallet gun. He used it for pest control. Yeah, sure. You remember that one? I'm mm, not ringing a bell. Okay. Well, what happened in that is uh, somebody had called the police thinking there was a gun in in their room. And when they were coming out of their room and the police shows up, they tell this couple to stop. And they tell him to get down on his, on their knees and then they tell the girlfriend to start crawling and the girlfriend crawls towards them and they put her in handcuffs and then they tell the guy to oh. he needs to put his hands up yeah and then it, at the same time tells him to start crawling like so how do you how supposed do you do to yeah well he he did he put his hands down and he started crawling and the police yells and say, I told you to keep your hands up. So, and he takes his hand and trying to pull up his shorts and that's when they shoot him. They right. shoot him and they shot him to death. Didn't he and beg for yeah, his and life? Yeah, he, and he was begging for his life. Yeah. And I remember that story now. Yeah, and they nothing happened to the cops. They got away because uh, they said uh, they were in fear for their lives. Well, I mean, yeah, if you're a coward, yeah. <laughs> you're always in fear for your life. It's, yeah. it's the way that goes. Uh, and there's no excuse for that. There's no reason in the world that you can't prosecute these police officers, um, or at least especially that one for what he did. I mean, he shot this guy. He was a father. He 
he had kids. So these kids that are now without a father, without somebody that can take care of them. That's right. And they had no problem shooting a person that had nothing, no gun. Not They didn't find anything. Yep, but that goes to the, uh, again, back to the culture and back to the individuals that they yeah. hire for these uh, police departments. Um, I mean, if you watch the video, he sounds like that he was going to, he was there to shoot somebody. Yeah. And he was just looking for an excuse to do it. He probably was. Yeah. That's uh, that's tragic. Yeah. Um, but so to keep uh, keep the pressure on him. So the only thing we can do is uh, uh, talk about it and try bring uh, some um, awareness. So maybe people would be willing to, uh, you know, change. Yeah, it should be a public outcry and yeah. let's get a movement started. I mean, these people should be protecting and serving. Yeah. Um, Not or uh, should they should get rid of that logo? I mean, uh, that. Is it logo? Uh, slogan? It? Maybe slogan, <laughs> yeah. It's just not true. Yeah, it's, it's not true there because they're not protecting and serving at all. Mm-hmm.